I think if it wasn't obvious before, it's obvious now. Secret Invasion, your failure is complete. So after six episodes, Secret Invasion starring Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury is over. And what have we got for it? What have we learned? What has been explained? Let's take that journey together. I am the man you may know as Z from Our Views Will Kill You. And we're going to discuss what all of what the point of Secret Invasion was. Because I frankly am still struggling to figure it out for myself. Now, if you're not aware, I have watched every piece of Marvel everything, and I have many rants about them, so please check them out above us right here. But let's talk about Secret Invasion. That last episode, it's pretty much the culmination of everything that's wrong with Marvel right now. And whether or not they can course correct, I think is, is very difficult to decide. So as we, we're going to look at the season as a whole, but first, let's recap the final episode. We'll talk a little bit about it. What happened? Who knows? All I know is, as Gizmodo has said, so when the mainstream media turns on you, I think you're in trouble. I think it's the second worst viewed show in all of uh, the Marvel Disney shows. Secret Invasion's finale is one step forward, two steps back. I don't know about the step forward. Uh, it's ultimately a forgettable intermission in between Marvel movies. First of all, how does it connect to any Marvel movies other than explaining or not explaining why, why is Nick Fury gone? Like, I don't know. Who cares? So anyway, I thought maybe it was possible for this to come home and maybe let's make... Nick Fury, great again, but that did not happen. All the episodes were directed by Ali Salim, not a good director, as far as I'm concerned. Kyle Bradstreet and Brian Tucker, terrible writers. There's some mistakes in this final episode that I think are pretty unforgivable. Some editing mistakes. So we'll talk about them and we'll get ourselves there. But first, let's talk about what happened in this episode. We get a reiteration of what happened and what didn't happen. Basically, the story is Nick Fury, at the end of Captain Marvel, promised the Scrolls that he would do something, like he would get them a home planet with the with the partnership of Carol Danvers. You may know her as Miss Marvel. Uh, she did nothing. She is not culpable for anything that happened in this. They don't even address the fact that she's culpable, as Gravik has decided. Gravik, who was a young pupil of Nick Fury. So Nick Fury made a deal with the Scrolls when they came back to Earth. They said, you work for us and we will help you come up with, we'll help you get a home planet. Why a technologically superior race that can you know, travel through the stars and colonize the stars would need Earthlings who can't fly outside of their own solar system why would they would need us to find a planet i don't know i'd guess captain marvel could push them there on a space ferry or something but none of that makes sense and at one point in the series talos the leader of the scrolls invites a million scrolls back to the planet earth because they can all fly there yet no one from earth can fly them to their new home planet so Gravik was a pupil of Nick Fury's and heard the promise and doesn't feel like Nick Fury delivered, but doesn't care about the fact that Carol Danvers didn't deliver. Sounds great. So what ends up happening is uh, we we jump into Nick Fury talking to his scroll wife, which I don't care. And I don't know what's going on there. Like, just, I, I don't care about any of that part. Like, it's just not interesting. Like, what is Nick Fury's character arc? He's old and he sucks and he doesn't like what he's doing. Okay. So then he rolls up on New Scrollos. And remember, New Scrollos is in a radioactive waste site or like a former nuclear um, 
whatever, nuclear power plant. So humans cannot survive. They make a big point of this because when Fury is going in to meet Gravik because he has all of the DNA of the Avengers and like every single super powered everyone ever. So when he has all those superpowers, he goes into New Skrullos and he needs to take, I guess, radiation pills. And even Gravik thinks about this and is like, oh yeah, this makes sense to me. He's human. He's probably going to die of radiation poisoning. At no point was I convinced that that was actually Nick Fury. Under there was just there was, was just I wasn't convinced at all when he stepped foot in there. I was like, this this isn't the way this is going to go down. But that will lead us to perhaps the stupidest decision I've ever seen in writing for the MCU ever. But we'll get back to that. But for now, back in London, uh, the president's still laid up and he's getting some awesome advice from Scrolldy. Scroll Rody. And Scroll Rody is telling some Navy Admiral that she's dumb and she should go away. She doesn't have any more scenes in the sh in the show, so she's just there to be told that she's stupid. And he's like, we need to obliterate Russia and blah, 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 blah. And then the, the lady spy master, who's British, decides that she came to America all of a sudden and is like, oh, Nick Fury's after you. He's coming for you. And I was like, yeah, obviously. They go back to New Skrullos again, where they're talking to Fury, and Fury just hands over the... Super scroll serum. So his plan, this is this is the worst plan ever, is that he's going to give Amelia Clark an untrained, not like she has no character arc, by the way. Amelia Clark has zero character arc. We don't know her motivations. We don't really understand anything. But she is posing as Fury, and the two of them, and I knew this was gonna happen. Stand in the Super Scroll making machine together. Now, when they ask Gravik, where are all the other scrolls? And he had told us he was going to make a Super Scroll army. He says, no, they're all packed away. Packed away where? No one knows. No one knows. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Our writing is terrible. In fact, at one point, Fury, who is Amelia Clark, goes and sees all these other dead scrolls. And it's just like, oh, yeah, whatever. This is cool. No big deal. Who cares? So they go through the scroll machine together, and it was pretty obvious that they were both going to get super scroll powers. I originally thought maybe they would try to, you know, poison Gravik, but no. Instead, they're just going to give him super scroll powers because it's okay. Strong Kwam and Amelia Clark will take care of him, even though she's like two feet shorter than him. You know, it doesn't matter. You get the power of Carol Danvers, and it's all good, even though you've never used the powers. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So they start to move the president up into a more secure area. I don't know why up is more secure, but that's what they decide to do. And uh, yeah, there's there's a part where Fury is taking. You don't know who it is, but it's, it's clearly Fury. He's taking out the guards with like trank darts. And I paused this and rewound it just to make sure I saw what I was seeing. They show you these the presidential guards being uh, zip tied by their hands and gagged with their mouths because you know Fury had enough time to do that. So this is why this is bad directing and bad editing. You have a director that you're trying to show a sense of pace and urgency, like oh my gosh, this is a tense moment. What could happen at any second here? At any second. Nick Fury could get into trouble and he could, you know, uh, or whoever's kidnapping, it could be scrolls. We don't know what it is. It's a tense moment. But we have time to zip tie and gag the presidential's guards. Okay. Whatever. And then they go into this whole, like, Fury has this whole, like, monologue about finding, there, there was no way to find a scroll planet. And when he blipped, he was just glad that he didn't have to care anymore about anything and he didn't have to protect humans or something. I, I, I don't know. None of that makes sense. 
they get super scrolled and we see different characters and I guess they missed a couple, uh, this reviewer missed a couple because it's like Thanos and Thor and Hulk and Valkyrie and Winter Soldier, Captain Marvel. They also, and you probably, you might've missed this, were the Ebony, what was it, Ebony Maw? Thanos' children, essentially. In fact, there's one part later which will that will come into play. And that's not even the, the, the dumbest part. So, Super Scrolled, blah, blah, blah. We could skip over a whole bunch of parts because now it's turned into a CGI garbage show. And who can expertly control all these powers that they've never even seen ever? In fact, yes, there is a part where Amelia Clark has a Drax arm. And this is just... The CGI is so stupid. All of this is stupid. So, Fury's giant... Like, his big flip is... I'm just gonna make... Amelia Clark's already super awesome. Let's just give her all the super awesome powers. You probably didn't even remember that Ebony Maw was telekinetic. And... You know, just from seeing his arm, you're supposed to know who is who. Like, what powers they're using. I think I saw a Hulk leg in there somewhere. So she's the power of the Hulk. Like, none of this makes sense. It's just useless. The Super Scroll is supposed to have the powers of the Fantastic Four, which doesn't make him invulnerable because there are still characters that are more powerful than the Super Scroll. But don't worry about it. Don't think about it. So then they're, they're, this is the other stupid part, is they're in the hospital and Fury is trying to negotiate with the president and say, look, this Rhodey is a scroll, British chick, she's on our side. President's got a gun for some reason, because yeah, I believe any of our presidents have, have guns, right? And don't forget who they made president, and they made him this intentionally. They could have made anybody president, but they made they made a particular type of person president. Because, you know, he's evil. Eventually. Sorry, spoiler. So anyway, he's like, oh, all these people are going to die if you nuke Russia. Oh, my God. All they had to do, because they've showed us this earlier in the season, is if you hurt a scroll, they can't maintain their form anymore. So if the British chick had just shot Rhodey, I don't know, in the hand, he would have seen it was a scroll, and they would have just taken her into custody. But they didn't do that. So then we go back to the Super Scroll fight, which is another lazy, terrible CGI fight that I don't care about. So stupid. This was as bad as WandaVision. Very boring. I don't care. Gravik dies. whoop de woo And then the president tells the American public that there are shape-shifting aliens, that they're going to kill all of them. And... There's people running around the, the globe murdering random people because they think they're scrolls, which definitely means that Nick Fury's wife is going to stay on planet Earth because she has work to do. What work? We don't know. They don't explain it to us, but she has work to do. And then Talos' daughter, Amelia Clark, and Strunk, British woman, who's not a bad actress. I like her character. She's kind of interesting. They're going to take over for Fury and Talos, and they're going to run this. They're going to run this place because they are strong Guamans. So, yep, that's what we get. And then Gaia goes and frees all the people, all the humans, all the humans in that play in uh, whatever they call it, New Scrolldom or whatever it's called. Remember, folks. Humans die when exposed to radiation poisoning, but it's okay because they forgot that part. It's okay. They were going to nuke it. They knew where it was. New Scrolldom or whatever it's called. New Scrollos. They're going to... Don't worry about it. Don't, don't listen too hard. They have a part where Martin Freeman in his stupid character is talking to Rhodey in his stupid character and like, you've been down here for a long time. Bro, how long have you been there? How do you even know you just woke up? You could have been there forever. They also explain like, oh, this is this is what happens when you do something. Let, let them sit there for a long time. They show all these people in like these pods. They don't explain what it is. I don't know what it is. And then Nick Fury calls the president and calls him a racist. And that's your story. That's great. 
Oh, and then they have the worst ending scene ever of E.T. phone home. You know, Nick Fury has been demoted to E.T. and he's going to go phone home. And this is just so stupid. And of course, he kisses a scroll. Ow! Who would have, did anyone want to see Nick Fury kiss anybody? No. Did anybody want to watch him kiss a chick in full scroll costume? No. Nobody wants this. What is going on? What does it even... What's the point of this reveal that he's going back up to Saber? Why? What? And then there's something about the Cree. The Cree. Open peace talks. What do you... None of this makes sense. It's boring. A waste of time. They killed Talos? Great. Who cares? They also apparently killed Maria Hill. She's Colby Smolders is dead. I guess she must have mouthed off to somebody. She took some pictures she wasn't supposed to take. Either way, this is one of the worst. It's just terrible. And what's kind of hilarious about this. First of all, they want to. This is CNN. Even CNN says that this was bad. That's how bad things are. It's. It's bad. It's real bad. And he's like, well, it could have been good, but I don't really like it. And it's just, he can't even explain why it's okay. He's just like, I liked Olivia Coleman, the British chick. Okay. Sure. And there he's like, Secret Evasion wasn't bad, but for students of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it seemed more like an elective than a required course. How it connects to anything else, I don't know, and I don't frankly care. I didn't need a sequel to Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel or not Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, whatever. But here is the other hilarious failure. So this is why this is secret failure, even though it's not a it's a secret invasion failure. It's just failure. It gets the finale gets the worst ever Rotten Tomato scores in MCU history. You know what are the worst MCU episodes? Take a wild freaking guess. She-Hulk, episode six, which is the terrible one where she gets drunk at a wedding. Complete waste of anyone's time. <laughs> episode four of Secret Invasion. Or no, episode one of Secret Invasion. 52%. Not good. Super boring. Secret Invasion, episode two. 50%. Goes downhill from here, folks. Secret Invasion 3, 38%. And Episode 4, I guess they're tied for second worst. <laughs> and then, I guess Episode 5 had a little bit of action, so it wasn't the worst thing ever. I mean, it wasn't good action, because literally everybody was standing out in the open to get shot at, but that's okay, don't worry about it. Secret Invasion, Episode 6, 13%. Another CGI clump of garbage. I guess that's supposed to be Groot, and I guess that's supposed to be the Rock Man from Thor. Your guess is as good as mine, folks. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This was hot garbage, and it ain't getting any better from here. There's, I, I, I don't, I've heard bad, you know, Daredevil's not looking so hot. I'm, uh, this is not good, folks. And I love the first 10 years of Marvel. And now I'm like, this is some of the worst stuff on television. This is bad. It's real bad. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I read them all and we'll have a little discourse, figure it out. Together, we can get through this. Check out my other rants. I would love it if you did. Like and subscribe, you know, thumbs up, all that stuff help, really helps the channel. We could really use the help. We appreciate it. You can also catch our full-length audio podcast. It's hilarious fun with my partner, New Noob. We take it to you. It's on Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join the party. It's good time, head by all, as we do reviews, news, and other great stuff there. But as for myself, I am on to the next one.